Is there anybody in here that's been through enough suffering in your life that you held on by a thread and you were just holding on by the skin of your teeth and you made it over and sometimes you felt like giving up and sometimes you felt like dying and sometimes you felt like committing suicide but there was just a little bit of ray of light, a little bit of light coming into the dark arc that lit it just enough for you to press your way through the storm and the rain. You're gonna lose everything. You won't come out of this. You're not smart enough. You're not bright enough. You waited too late, you should have started younger. Those are the kind of voices that we all live with. Those voices are the kind of voices that stop you from buying into your own life. The anxiety and the pressure and the strength that it took to get from where you are doesn't go away so you don't really believe it's yours. You're driving it, but you don't really believe it's yours. And you're scared to relax and really rest in whatever it is or whoever it is. Because everything else went away. Maybe this will go away too. Something that you know that you know that you know becomes the catalyst against the trials, against the traumas, against the sleepless nights, against the virus, against the crisis, against the times that we're living in. We're so busy searching for somebody to celebrate us that we don't celebrate ourselves. We are living in a time where nearly 700,000 people are now dead from a, something we can't even see. We are fighting an invisible enemy. And that enemy has friends that has created trauma and distress until we are overwhelmed even when nothing else is going wrong. Just the feeling that other people are going wrong gives us a certain degree of stress and trauma. How do we stand up against this unseen foe we fight right now? Of course we need to do everything we can to protect ourselves from the virus. But I'm not just talking about the virus, I'm talking about your mind. I'm talking about your emotions, your will, your spirit, your fight, your drive, your tenacity, your sense of normalcy, your courage to get out of the house, your courage to get out of the bed, the courage to continue when there's a threat rather than to focus on the bitterness of my disappointment, I focused on the fact that some kind of way I'll come out of this wiser and stronger and better and richer and fuller. These are the first scenes of my life, though that pleasure has been for the most part mingled with sorrow. We know that there's going to be a process that we have to go through in order to get to the promise. And in the process, you have to learn how to take baby steps and celebrate baby steps and appreciate this little bit. It is the way you talk to yourself that determines whether you endure hardness or not, whether you can stand affliction or not. It is what you choose to think about. If you are abusive to yourself, you talk badly to yourself, you attract people who reinforce that. If you celebrate yourself, you will draw people into your life who also join your party and they celebrate with you. The enemy always has some sort of tool or memory or situation that he uses to terrify you, even though the good times are here. And the dream is there, and the blessing is there, and the goodness is there. But there's always this haunting, nagging, defiance that says, don't you relax. You're not worth it. You don't deserve it. And I'm wondering if there are things echoing in your head right now that are stopping you from living your best life because you will not silence them by speaking back. You shall have whatever you say. You shall have whatever you say. If it's betrayal, you shall have whatever you say. If it's a life without love, you shall have whatever you say. It doesn't just work positively, it also works negatively. You shall have whatever you say.
you must then begin to realize that we go through trauma. We all have triggers, but we have trial. The problem is sometimes we are in a perpetual state of trauma and triggers, and we don't take advantage of the triumph. We clap a minute and we're through. We say, thank you, and we're done with it. We say, oh, that's a good thing, and we go on. The trauma lasted for six months. The triumph lasts for six minutes. We ought to have at least as long a celebration as we had frustration.